everyone. I greeted everyone. Everyone did not respond. The Lord bless you today. And make the work to prosper in your hand. Always in Jesus' name. New strength. New ability. New joy. New happiness in the work of God. Nothing will discourage you. Any discouragement that comes, the fire of the Holy Ghost will burn them up in Jesus' name. Father, we thank you for your joyful, happy, glad leaders and workers tonight in Jesus' name. Renew the strength of everyone, the vision of everyone, the faith of everyone that this 2020 vision will take root in every life in Jesus' name. Let the joy of the Lord be the strength of everyone. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. We're turning to Isaiah chapter 41. Isaiah chapter 41. I'm reading from verse 1. Keep silence before me, O islands, and let the people renew their strength. Let them come near. Then let them speak. Let us come near together to judgment. Tonight, we're continuing our series on leadership. Tonight, we're dealing with the letter R, the renewal of relentless end time leaders. End time leaders. End time leaders are special leaders. They're not leaders like other people. The Lord has chosen us to become leaders in the kingdom of God at such a time as this. The age is running to a close. Time is running to a close. And the end has come. And the end, the last hours of the last days, of the last decade, and of the last period has come upon us. And if there is anything a leader that occupies such a position ought to think about it is how I can be relentless, never tired, never looking back. This is not the time to be looking back, looking sideways, looking other, at other things because a leader coming to the end time like this must be focused, must be passionate must be pursued and he must pursue relentlessly not some somebody that will say if i don't do it today i might do it tomorrow if i don't do it this week i can do it another time because when you are living in the last days you don't have that luxury or that privilege of postponing anything or procrastinating anything that's what the Lord is telling us, that we need to renew our strength and renew our mind and renew our vision and renew everything we have so that we will do the work today, tomorrow, and the time God gives us as if we are just starting. And we have this new energy and this new power that nothing can slow us down. Nothing will slow you down. The renewal of relentless end time leaders look at that verse one again isaiah chapter 41 keep silence before me O islands and let the people renew their strength you have to silence every other thing around you any voice that is talking to you anyone that is pulling you back anything that is driving you back anything that is slowing you down you say keep quiet i want to do the work of god and i want to do this and achieve without relenting without looking back without getting tired actually look at what god wants to do in verse 15 verse 15 of that chapter behold I, make, I will make thee a new, sharp, threshing instrument having teeth. You will not be blunt. 
you will not be dull. And your walk and your step and everything you do will not look like already you are worn out, already you are tired. And the enemy is saying, look at him coming, look at her coming. I can finish this one in a moment. Nobody will finish you. A new sharp threshing instrument, having tears, thou shalt thresh the mountains and beat them small and shall make the hills as chaff. I thought somebody would say amen. I said chapter 40 verse 31. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. This is the time of the new world. Your strength will be renewed. Your mind will be renewed. Your backbone will be strengthened all over again in Jesus' name. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. We need that in these last days. The end time leaders, end time pastors, and time preachers, they need such a renewal of the Holy Spirit that we will mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. If anybody needs to run and not be weary, it's the end time leaders, end time pastors, end time preachers, end time ministers. They shall walk and they shall not faint. Amen. Lamentation. I'm reading from chapter 5, Lamentation chapter 5, we're reading from verse 21. Lamentation chapter 5, verse 21, Turn thou us unto thee, O Lord, and we shall be turned, renew our days as of old. Renew our days as of old. There's one retreat we had around 1995, about that time that I've never forgotten power as of old. That was a great retreat. And since that time, greater retreats have come. But we're telling the Lord, power as of old, vision as of old, engagement as of old, enthusiasm as of old, passion as of old, courage as of old, and running the race that is set before us as of old. That the same power we had at that time, greater power that we had at that time, the Lord will renew that power, that strength in every one of us in Jesus' name. Revival as of old, we dream and we envision and we pray and we desire that that same revival as of old will take root in the house of God, in the people of God, that the Lord will renew our days as of old. And it says before that can happen, he needs to turn us, he needs to transform us. He needs to make us face the right direction. Turn thou us unto thee, O Lord, and we shall be turned. Renew our days as of old. He will renew your days as of old. In 2 Corinthians chapter 5, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, we're reading from verse 16. 2 Corinthians chapter, chapter 5, chapter 4, verse 16 is chapter 4. For which cause we faint not. End time leaders, we don't have time to faint. End time preachers, we don't have time to faint. End time pursuers, we don't have time to faint. And it says, for which cause we faint not. But though our outward man perish, yet the inward man is renewed day by day. You in what man will be renewed day by day. For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, worketh for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory, while we look not at things which are seen. If you look around you, you'll see a lot of things that will dishearten you, that will discourage you, that might depress you. But it says, you close your eyes to the things around that you can see. 
you close your mind to the things around that you can see. And it says, why we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporal. They will soon all pass away. But the things which are not seen are eternal keep on looking at those things that are eternal so that your ministry will continue to the very end you will not stop your journey halfway you will not stop your ministry halfway because better things are yet to come and better breakthrough higher greater breakthrough still to come this is not the time to be weak and this is not the time to look back i will not look back until the end, end time leaders must keep on working for God relentlessly. Look at Revelation chapter 2. I'm reading from verse 25. Revelation chapter 2, verse 25. But that which ye have already hold fast till I come. Hold fast till I come. And he that overcometh and keepeth my works unto the end the works unto the end the ministry unto the end the service unto the end the labor unto the end and the sin the ministry the lord has committed into your hand he says he that overcometh and keepeth my works unto the end to him will i give power over the nations and he shall root them with a rod of iron, as the vessels of a potter shall they be broken to shivers, even as I received of my father, and I will give him the morning star. He that has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says unto the churches. What the Lord is telling us, you will hear in Jesus' name. The message again, the renewal of relentless end time leaders. Three points we're looking at. Number one, the peculiarities of these trying last days. The peculiarities of these trying last days. These last days are tall. These last days will try every fiber in you. It will try every backbone to see whether you can carry the load the Lord has put before you to carry. It's a tr it's, they are trying days, and yet, as peculiar as they are, we are going to have peculiar strength, peculiar energy, and peculiar, the peculiar power that whatever may be happening around us, we will sail through and we will get a breakthrough in Jesus' name. The peculiarities of these trying last days. Point number two, the purpose of transferable leaders' development. It's wonderful that you are coming every week for the leaders' meeting, leaders' development. But you understand, the reason why we come is not just for ourselves, yes, for ourselves, and then for the other people we're raising up. We're going to transfer. All that we are learning as leaders to the upcoming leaders that God is giving us chance to lead. The purpose of transferable leaders development. Point number three, a progress towards the timeless Lord's desire. As we are working for the Lord and working with the Lord, we need to discover the Lord's desire. And those desires are timeless. And we need to be making progress towards that timeless Lord's desire. Just walking is not enough. Just moving is not enough. The children of Israel were moving and moving and moving all the time for those 40 years. But there was no progress. They were doing merry-go-round, 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 40 years. And many of them died in the wilderness active. They died in the wilderness laboring. They died in the wilderness walking and walking and walking because they were not making progress towards the Lord's desire. Our progress point number three, towards 
the timeless Lord's desire. Number one. What's my number one? I love your voice. The Lord bless your voice in Jesus' name. Look at the Deuteronomy chapter 31. The peculiarities of these trying last days. In Deuteronomy chapter 31, I'm reading from verse 29. Chapter 31, verse 29. For I know that after my death, ye will utterly corrupt yourselves and turn aside from the way which I have commanded you. And evil will befall you in the latter days. In the latter days. Look at the revelation coming from Moses. He was about to leave the children of Israel. And he said, I'm going to talk to you on what is going to happen. On what you are going to observe. On what you are going to experience. On the situation, the circumstances that will come upon you. On the things that will overweigh, that will overweigh you in the latter days. The peculiarities of the last days, trying last days. He said, in those latter days, you will evil will befall them. Because you will do evil in the sight of the Lord to provide provoke him to anger through the work of your hand. What's the peculiarity of the days in which you are evil? Evil. The days we're living, evil and backsliding and sin and transgression and disinterestedness in the word of the Lord is everywhere. And if you're walking in so, at such a time, when it comes to you, and when you see how the people are reacting and how they're behaving, you'll not be surprised the Lord said so. It's one of the peculiarities of the last days that will come, and yet it is in these same last days with those peculiarities that the Lord has raised us up and has given us a work to do deal and we're going to do it successfully we're looking at acts of the apostles chapter 20 acts of the apostles chapter 20 i'm reading from verse 29 the peculiarities of these trying last days in acts chapter 20 verse 29 it says for i know this that after my departure shall grievous wolves enter in among you not sparing the flock you see, if we're going to do the work effectively um, in these last days, we need to build a scriptural fence around the fold, around the flock. The shepherd ought to build the fold, ought to build the uh, barriers around the sheep so that all those ones that want to come in grievous wolves to enter in among the people of God, not sparing the flock, we will fence them out. I said we'll fence them out. But you know, if you don't know that you are living in the last days and you think everything is easy, everybody loves the Bible, everybody loves the Word of God, everybody loves sound doctrine, and these people have given themselves to the Lord, and it's the church of God in any case. And nothing can happen to the church of God we forget that Satan will fight tooth and nail against the doctrine of righteousness and holiness and sanctification and will want to draw people away. Look at verse 30. Also of your own selves shall men arise speaking perverse things to draw away disciples after them. And there are people that they, they think that People should not be submissive to Christ alone. They are there and they are here and they want to have the same glory as Christ. They want to have the same hold on the people as Christ. And so they will rise so speaking perverse things, doing perverse things, acting out perverse things to draw away disciples after themselves. If the pastor is not vigilant, if the shepherd is not vigilant, if the leader is not vigilant and is just, you know, I preach the word, I've been faithful to the word, and I preach the Bible, and so you people, you are responsible to keep what you have got, and whatever happens to you, it's in your hand. No, no, you can't do that, because it says there are people that arise up. 
And such people that try so up, they'll be very aggressive. They'll be bold against the truth. They'll be courageous against the truth. If you are, you know, a spineless person, not having courage, not having backbone, you don't have the two feet to stand. And these people that bring in error, and the people that want to level the, you know, the church of the living God, and they want to turn the church to their own kind of a stooge or slave, and you just fold your hand and you say, uh, God bless you. Uh, the Lord will judge those who are uh, trying to make the church backslide and all that. You can't do that. It says of your own selves, men will arise. If they arise, you too will arise. I said you will arise. And you say you cannot do that. You cannot bring in falsehood. You cannot bring in the principle and the doctrine of the Antichrist here will stand against you by prayer. We stand against you by preaching. We stand against you by very serious declaration of the word of God. The church will stand in Jesus' name. This church will stand. I said this church will stand. The peculiarities of these last days, trying last days, in verse 31, it says in verse 31, therefore watch and remember that by the space of three years, I cease not to warn every one of you night and day with tears. And let's look at the question Jesus asked in Luke chapter 18. Luke chapter 18, the Lord was thinking about the time of his coming and the time of the last days. Look at Luke chapter 18. I'm reading from verse, uh, reading from verse 8. I tell you that he will avenge them speedily. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man cometh, shall he find faith on the earth? Shall he find faith on the earth in the last days? Faith will be dwindling. Faith will be going down. Men and women, church people, will try to depend on money. They'll try to depend on their own strength. They'll try to depend on their human contacts. And they will not depend upon the Lord. And the Lord Jesus said in the last days, those last trying last days, when the Son of Man shall come, shall he find faith on the earth? He'll find faith in your heart. I said you'll find faith in your heart and you'll find faith in our church in Jesus' name. We'll be looking up to the Lord, we'll be trusting the Lord, we'll be believing the Lord and what we know he did in days gone by, we still believe today he will keep on doing in Jesus' name. We're looking at uh, Matthew chapter 24. Matthew chapter 24, I'm reading from verse 4. Matthew chapter 24, we're reading from verse 4. It says in verse 4, And Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you. What's the peculiarity of the last days? Deception. Deception, falsehood, false doctrine. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. That's the sign of the last days. Many false prophets all around, and they shall deceive many. And, shall, and you shall hear of wars, and rumors of wars. You'll hear of war, you'll hear of fighting, you'll hear of strife. In every community, you'll hear of strife. In families, you'll hear of strife. In churches, places of worship, you'll, you'll hear of war, and of strife, and of division, and of commotion. You'll not be party to any strife in Jesus' name. And it says, you'll hear of strife. See that ye be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the final end is not yet. For nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. And there shall be famines, and pestilences, and earthquakes in diverse places. All these are the beginning of sorrows. It's saying that these things will happen, 
because it's going to be the last days. Let's look at verse 37. In verse 37 of that same chapter, it says, let me back up to verse, uh, yes, verse 37, but as the days of Noah were, so also shall the coming of the Son of Man be. What was happening at the time of Noah? As Noah went out, he was building the ark, and he said, Run, escape for your life. Judgment is coming. The flood is going to come. It's going to sweep over the whole earth, and it's going to drown everyone. But he said, Uncle Noah has gone berserk. Uncle Noah has gone mad. Uncle Noah is eccentric. Uncle Noah is narrow-minded. Uncle Noah believes that a loving God, a good God, a merciful God is going to bring a judgment that is going to affect the whole world. That's what the people think today. You talk of judgment upon the righteous. You talk of hellfire upon the people that remain in their sins. You talk of people perishing. Those who are living licentious lives, they say, you know, it's, it's a peculiar preacher. It's an eccentric preacher. It's, uh, you know, a narrow-minded preacher. It doesn't see, you know, all this beautiful world. How can this world come to an end? And that is the attitude of people in the last days. But that wrong attitude of the last days will not move you, will not shake you. Uh, look at verse 38, for as in the days that were before the flood, just before the flood, the last days before the flood, as those days were, they were eating and drinking, and they were marrying and giving in marriage until the day that Noah entered into the ark. And they knew not until the flood came and took them all away. So shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. The Lord has told us and the Lord has warned us that these peculiarities of the last days will really happen. And I pray they will not take you by surprise in Jesus' name. Uh, we're coming to uh, 2 Timothy chapter 3. 2 Timothy chapter 3. I'm reading from verse 7, 2 Timothy chapter 3, and we're reading it from verse, uh, chapter 3, verse 7. It says in verse 7, it says, Ever learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. As you look at churchianity, not Christianity, churchianity today, a church there, a church there, a church there, and this church has a Bible school attached to the church, another church there has a Bible school attached to the church. They have diploma, they have uh, theology, they have this and that, and then you look at their lives. Some of them, you will never know that they have been studying the Bible at all. And yet they can tell you that they're in the Bible school, apart from the regular services in their church. And yet it says, ever learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. Look at chapter 4. In, in chapter 4, I'm reading from verse 3. <clears throat> chapter 4, verse 3. For the time will come. When they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lost, shall they heap to themselves teachers have been itching ears, and they shall turn away their ears from the truth, and shall be turned unto fables. That's the last days. And these things are happening already, and I pray they will not catch you. <clears throat> they will not catch me. They will not catch our church in Jesus' name. We are coming to 1 John chapter 2. 1 John chapter 2. We are reading from verse 18. 1 John chapter 2 verse 18. Little children, it is the last time. Last time. The last time. And these are trying times. The latter days before the, before the Son of God will come. It says, little children... It is the last time, and as ye have heard that the Antichrist shall come, even now are there many Antichrists. Even now are there many Antichrists. 
they profess that they are worshipping God and they profess they believe in Christ and when you hear some things they say about Christ it will shock you to the marrow because they are walking of the spirit of the Antichrist if you hear what some people will say about the doctrines of Christ about the salvation in Christ, about holiness and sanctification through Christ, about the healing power of Christ, and about the holiness, righteousness, purity of life of the Lord Jesus Christ, it will shock you. But it says that many antichrists, by which we know, but whereby we know that it is the last time, it is the last time, and the spirit of this last time of the age will not catch you, will not subdue you, and will not swallow you up in Jesus' name. And look at it now, Jude, Jude, only one chapter, verse 18. Jude, we're looking at verse 18. How? That they told you there should be mockers in the last time. Last days, there will be people that will mock. They hear the word of God. They will not fully believe. They will not fully accept. And they will not fully surrender and yield to that word. Because it says that they will walk after their own ungodly laws. These be they that separate themselves, sensual, having not the spirit. Well, that's enough learning about the peculiarities of these last trying days. Point number two now, where do we come every week like this to learn about the development of leaders in the Christian church and in the Christian assembly? Just this, so that by the grace of God, we will be leaders that will lead people from sin, out of sin, to the salvation of the Lord in Jesus' name. But not only that, we will be leaders that will transfer what we're learning to other people. Transfer what we're learning to other people. Actually, as we look at leaders in Bible days, that's exactly what they did. The Lord talked to them, spoke to them. And they received the word, the Father spoke to them, and they transferred that word, transferred that word unto the leaders coming after them. And those leaders transferred that same word to other people. And that's why the gospel has come to us today, because of the transferable principles and the transferable commitment and the transferable consecration and the transferable uncompromising stand of those leaders and so if you are being trained if you are being developed this is what you must do in these last days you raise up others you transfer the development you transfer the knowledge you transfer the the skill you transfer the understanding the anointing to other people let me show you some examples we're looking at exodus chapter 40 exodus chapter 40 and i'm reading from verse 16 exodus chapter 40 and we're reading from verse 16 transferable leadership principle transferable transferable exodus chapter 14 look at verse 16 thus did moses according to all that the lord commanded him so did he he was a leader a leader that was faithful a leader that was committed to the word the Lord had given him. But you know what he did? He transferred that to Joshua. We're looking at Joshua chapter 11. And we're reading from verse 15. Joshua chapter 11. Reading from verse 15. Transfer, transfer. You have heard, you have learned. You have believed, you have accepted, you are walking with that truth, transfer it. Joshua chapter 11, reading from verse 15. As the Lord commanded Moses, his servant, so did Moses command Joshua. That's transfer. And so did Joshua, and so did Joshua. He left nothing 
undone of all that the Lord commanded Moses. He got everything. He accepted everything. He believed everything that was transferred unto him. What happened after Joshua? We're coming to Joshua chapter 24. Joshua chapter 24. I'm reading from verse 31. Joshua chapter 24 verse 31. And Israel searched the Lord all the days of Joshua and all the days of the elders that outlived Joshua and which had known all the works of the Lord that he had done for Israel. Moses transferred it to Joshua and Joshua transferred it to all the leaders that outlived him. That's what we're expected to do. Transfer, transfer, transfer it. As we come to the New Testament, look at that. Uh, look at the uh, transmission and the transference of the word and of the doctrine and of the ministry to all the upcoming leaders. We're looking at Second Timothy chapter two, verse two. Transfer it. Don't let it die in your mouth. Transfer it. Don't let it be only in your local job. Transfer it. Don't be the person that I'm doing it all. I can do it all. Train other people. Transfer the word unto them. Transfer sound doctrine unto them. Second Timothy chapter 2, we're reading from verse 2. And the things that thou hast heard of me. Paul transferred it to Timothy. And he says, Timothy, you have heard it from me. I transferred it to you. All the doctrines, all the pattern, all the ministry, I gave it to you. I transferred it to you. The message of salvation, Timothy, you are not ignorant. The message of holiness without which no man shall say the Lord. Most, uh, Timothy, you are not ignorant. And the, 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 uh, the message of power from on high. And I told to stir up the gift that is within you. You are not ignorant. The, 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 the message that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. You are not ignorant. The message that in the last days, these are the things that will happen. You are not ignorant. I transferred it to you. Timothy, what are you going to do now? Look at that chapter 2, verse 2. And the things that thou hast heard of me among many witnesses, the same commit to faithful men. The same commit to faithful men. You are being trained so that you can train others. You are learning so you can teach others. And you are developing so you can develop others. Find faithful men and women. Find faithful people. And that same thing you have heard from me, you will transfer to them. Who shall be able to teach others also? It will not die with them. They'll be able to teach. They'll be able to develop. They'll be able to train others also. Now, what was Timothy to pass on to the upcoming leaders? We're looking at Second Timothy chapter 4. I'm reading from verse 2. Second Timothy chapter 4, reading from verse 2. Preach the word. That's what you have to transfer. Do it yourself. Transfer it. Be instant in season and out of season. Uh, don't make it like when it's easy, I'll do it. When there's no problem, I'll do it. When I have enough money, all the money I want, I'll do it. And when people make it easy for me and it's in season, I'll do it. And when they say yes to everything I say and there's no opposition, no persecution, I will do it. It says, preach the word, be instant in season and out of season. When it's convenient, do it. When it's not convenient, do it. Rainy season, dry season, do it. When people support, when people oppose, do it. Reprove, rebuke, exhort without long suffering and doctrine. For the time will come, Timothy, when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own law shall they heed to themselves, teachers having itching ears, and they shall turn away from the, their ears from the truth. Timothy, don't be disappointed if you are keeping on to the truth. There are times you'll find some people turn away from you. They, they don't hate you, but they hate the truth you are preaching. 
There are times they will attack you and oppose you. It's not because you've done anything bad to them. It's because they do not have a heart for the truth, a mind for the truth, and they do not have interest in the truth. They will turn their ears away from the truth and shall be turned unto fables. You'll find that some people that listen to you sometimes, they, you know, you don't see them anymore. They have gone to where they're telling stories. They have gone to where they're telling fables. They have gone to where they will not tell them any convicting word, any convicting message. And then somebody comes to tell you, do you know that, you know, you're not keeping all your members because, you know, this true truth all the time, sanctification all the time, holiness all the time, heaven all the time, and then those who don't believe in God are going to hell. Uh, well, maybe it's, nobody is talking to you, but we need to tell you that you're losing some members. And you say, where are we losing them to? They're going to, you know, places. Why don't you think about, you know, think about this church? And uh, why don't you try to copy what is good there? How they draw members and they draw people and they keep the young people. And the young people are so happy in those places. What are they doing that is keeping them there? Because they're telling fables. Because they're telling some lies. Because they never tell them about their sin. Because they not talk to them about repentance and restitution. Because they not tell them without holiness no man shall see the Lord. You can't copy that. You can't copy that. We want everybody to stay. But in the last day, some people will turn away. But that will not turn you away. That will not stop you from telling the truth. That will not stop your preaching of sound doctrine until the very end in Jesus' name. Hey, look, at, look at verse 5. But watch thou in all things. Timothy, don't allow anything to move you or to shake you or shake your mind. It says, watch thou in all things. Endure afflictions. Endure afflictions. Ministry is not a sugar and honey every time. Ministry, preaching the word is not easy road every time. Preaching the word is not people patting you at the back. Good pastor, great pastor. And you know, some, some of them will methodically and in a pat, backhanded way, they'll try to, you know, cut off your leg and cut you from where you are standing. That's part of the ministry. Don't let anything shake you. You will go on to the very end in Jesus' name. Watch now in all things. Endure affliction. Do the work of an evangelist and make full proof of thy ministry. Thank God you are going to endure till the very end. I said you'll endure till the very end. We've looked at the transferable pattern of the ministry now what's the purpose who are we ministering what are we doing in the ministry what does the lord wants to accomplish the purpose the purpose of transferable leaders development look at the purpose now in first john chapter 3 first john chapter 3 and i'm reading from verse 8 first john chapter 3 we're reading from verse 8 it says in verse 8 that he that committed sin is of the devil. But the devil sin it from the beginning. For this purpose, that's the word, for this purpose, for this purpose, the Son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. That he might destroy the works of the devil. That's why Jesus came. That's why he died on the cross of Calvary. And that's why he has raised you up. He has raised me up. What's the purpose? To destroy the works of the devil. The fall in Genesis chapter 3, that's the work of the devil. He wants us to reverse that. People are depraved. People are sinful. He wants us to call them what the gospel, what the gospel message, and bring them into the kingdom of God. Sickness, that's of the devil, the works of the devil. The purpose he has raised us up is so that we look at the sick and we say, Christ died for you. And by his stripes you are healed. And show them the word of God on healing and get them out of that evil disease. The purpose is to make their heart new. 
is to make their hearts sanctified. That's why Jesus came for this purpose. Jesus came that he might destroy the works of the devil. Depravity is the work of the devil. And sinfulness is the work of the devil. Self and self-centeredness is the work of the devil. He's sending us out so that we will tell the people Christ has come. And has come to destroy all the works of the devil. Uh, affliction of Satan demonology demons occupying people's minds occupying people's brain and derailing them that's the work of the devil and the lord came so that he can destroy the works of the devil people going to hell so that they will spend eternity with satan and his angels that's the work of the devil he wants us to stand in the way and see the people that are rushing to hell and to act like christ and show them you know where you are going? You know the road you are following? You know that this broad way will lead to hellfire eternally and let them turn back. Call them to repentance. That's the work of the Lord Jesus Christ for this purpose. The Son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. We will follow through with that purpose. We will not compromise with Satan. We will not work with Satan. We will not do the work of Satan. I hope I thought my people will say Amen. Yeah. Acts of the Apostles, chapter 26. Acts of the Apostles, chapter 26. We're reading from verse 16. But rise and stand upon thy feet. You cannot be wobbling, unsure, walking like a paralyzed man, like somebody who is not balanced. You lean towards this today, you lean towards that tomorrow. You're not predictable. You cannot be like that. If you're going to work purposefully in these last days, therefore the Lord said in verse 16, But rise, stand upon thy feet, for I have appeared unto thee for this purpose. There's a purpose. You must know the purpose while you're a minister. If you're a minister in deeper life, Bible church, deeper Christian life ministry, you must know that the purpose God himself raised up deeper Christian life ministry is that others may, I cannot, is to get us into the Bible. Deeper life, Bible church, from cover to cover, to believe everything, to embrace everything, to preach everything, to stand uncompromisingly for everything, to practice everything, not saying we don't believe that, that one is not our doctrine, whatever is in the Bible is our doctrine. And for this purpose, the Lord has raised us up and the Lord brought you in to make you a minister and a witness both of those things which thou hast seen and of those things in the which I will appear unto thee delivering thee from the people he will deliver you from the people until you finish your work nothing will touch your life you know there are people have said that over and over and over and there are people that don't believe the word of god i'm not talking about you but there are some people somewhere that do not believe the word of god but they believe the news they hear every day and so they will not come out to bible study they will not come out to revival hour they will not come out to leaders meetings thank god you always see him i said thank god you always see him you will be the proof that nothing will touch you until you finish your work. It says, delivering thee from the people and from the Gentiles unto whom now I send thee. What's the purpose? Sending him. What's the purpose? Sending me. What's the purpose? Sending us. Verse 18, to open their eyes and to turn them from darkness to light and from the power of Satan unto God. Who is more powerful, Satan or God? I said, who is more powerful in your life, Satan or God? Who is more powerful in your combat, Satan or God? Who is more powerful in our church, Satan or God? God is more powerful. He created the whole universe and just a single word, it will crush all those enemies. 
It says to turn them from the power of Satan unto God that they may receive forgiveness of sins, number one, and inheritance among them which are sanctified by faith that is in me. The purpose will be fulfilled in our lives. We will keep to the purpose of our calling and the purpose of our ministry in Jesus' name. Number one, the peculiarities of these trying last days. Number two, the purpose of transferable leaders' development. Number three, now, our progress towards the timeless Lord's desire. What's the Lord's desire? What does he want? And how do we follow after that plan, that pattern of the Lord's desire? And let's come to Isaiah chapter 53. In this desire, I want you to note the word all, A-L-L, all, A-L-L. -L. Every time, look for that word all. Chapter 53 of, um, of Isaiah, and we're reading from verse 6. Look at this, this is the Lord's desire. It says, all we like sheep have gone astray. All we like sheep have gone astray. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. We have turned everyone to his own way. And the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of how many people? Of us all. Salvation is available to everyone. Of us all. What's the desire of the Lord? Timeless Lord's desire. He wants us to tell everyone. He wants us to tell all creatures. Because he laid the iniquity of us all on him. Look at chapter 45 of Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 45. We're reading from verse 22. Isaiah chapter 45 verse 22. Look unto me and be ye saved all the ends of the earth. The sacrifice of the Lord Jesus Christ has not uh, neglected, overlooked any group of people. He wants everyone to come to the knowledge of salvation. Look unto me and be ye saved all the ends of the earth for I am God and there is none else. You notice the word all there in Luke chapter 2. I'm reading from verse 10. Luke chapter 2 we're looking at verse 10, the intention of the Lord, the plan of the Lord, the sacrifice of Jesus, and the desire of the Lord. He wants all, he wants all, he wants all to come to the knowledge of salvation. Luke chapter 2, we're reading from verse 10. Luke chapter 2, verse 10, and the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to tell me all people for unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior which is Christ the Lord you understand the Savior came and he came for all Jesus came and he brought salvation to all and so you are not saying we cannot plant church in that area Christ is not for them we cannot plant a church in that community Christ is not for them we cannot go to that area Christ is not for them uh, they are for you know this group of people they are for that group of people Jesus died for all and the desire of the Lord is to take the gospel to all. We're looking at 1 Timothy chapter 2. 1 Timothy chapter 2. We're reading from verse 3. 1 Timothy chapter 2 verse 3. For this is good and acceptable in the sight of God our Savior who will have all men to be saved. All men to be saved. When you see people, maybe because of their dressing, maybe because of their appearance, maybe because of their language, maybe because of the of the of the mark they have, and you think, oh, is from that area, is from that area. I cannot preach the word to them who will have all men to be saved and to come unto the knowledge of the truth. To come unto the knowledge of the truth. How many people did Jesus die for? 
How many people does he want us to preach the gospel to? How many people does he want us to bring into the kingdom? Tell me, tell me now. Oh, we're looking at Acts chapter, Acts chapter 17. Acts chapter 17. We're reading from verse 13. Acts chapter 17, verse 30. And the times of this ignorance God winked at, but now commandeth how many people? All men everywhere to repent. It's commanded all men everywhere to, everywhere to repent because he has appointed a day in the which he will judge the world in righteousness by that man whom he has ordained whereof he has given assurance unto all men, has given assurance to all men in that he raised him from the dead. He wants this salvation, he wants this truth to come to everyone. And he doesn't want us to uh, be, you know, saying that this one cannot have, this one will not repent. Preach the word and preach it to everyone. The Lord will honor your faith. The Lord will honor your faithfulness. And the Lord will bring many people into the kingdom through you, through me, through us in Jesus' name. Look at chapter 3 of Second Peter. Second Peter chapter 3. And we're reading from verse 9. Second Peter chapter 3 verse 9. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise as some men count slackness. But his long suffering to us watch, not willing that any should perish not willing that any should perish who does god want to perish i said who does god want to go to hell no one not willing that any should perish but that tell me but that tell me out aloud all should come to repentance that's why he has given us the message the message of salvation and it's for everyone and he has told us what to do we're going to do it Fearlessly, we're going to do it. Faithfully, we're going to do it. Relentlessly, we're going to do it. Courageously, we're going to do it in Jesus' name. Mark chapter 16. I'm reading from verse 15. Mark chapter 16. Reading from verse 15. And he said unto them, as he's saying unto us, Go ye into, tell me, all the world and preach the gospel to tell me every creature he wants all the world to hear he wants every creature to hear he that believeth and is baptized shall be saved he that believeth not shall be damned your hearers will believe the people you preach to they will believe the lord will grant you the power of his spirit the conviction of his spirit and the word in your mouth will draw souls into the kingdom in Jesus name and this sign shall follow them that believe them that believe where are they them that believe are they here tonight the signs will follow you the signs shall follow them that believe in my name shall they cast out devils they shall speak with new tongues they shall take up serpents. Serpents will not hurt you. Scorpions will not hurt you. Evil spirit, evil power will not hurt you. They take the serpents up and they throw them away. And if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. Deadly things will not hurt you. Deadly things are made to make people die. But those deadly things will not kill you. And then he goes on to say, And they shall lay their hands on the sick, and they shall recover. What are those anointed hands? When are you going to start using that anointing, anointed hand, laying it on the sick? You will see miracle. You will see power manifestation. And you will see the demonstration of the Holy Ghost in Jesus' name. So then, after the Lord had spoken unto them, he was received up into heaven and sat on the right hand of God. And they went forth. It's now our turn. And they went forth. 
I said it's not your turn and they went forth. What are those who are going to go forth? Stand on your feet. And they went forth and they preached everywhere the Lord walking with them. The Lord is going to walk with you. Morning, night and noon, the Lord will walk with you. In your community, in your village, in your local church, the Lord will walk with you. He will be confirming the word or signs following. There's an amen in the scripture here. Shout that amen. That amen, it transferred into your ministry. Open your mouth and tell the Lord, the Lord has shown us what's going to be happening in the last days. He brought you here, He brought us here, so that we can become relentless and He will renew His power, He will renew His strength, He will renew His energy, He will renew His divine unction in your life. They went forth, you are going forth, and the Lord will keep walking with you.